a gentleman named John. And, uh, John was quite poor, and after his uh, father died, everything had to be sold for debts. John had nothing but a little backpack and a walking stick and a, and a couple of coins. And he set out to make his fortune in the world. He went about 10, 20 miles or so, and it became dark, so he stopped at a nearby church to rest. And he, uh, because churches were open in those days for travelers. So he climbed into a pew, and uh, but before he, uh, before he uh, laid down, of course, he went before the altar to say his nightly prayers. And there he saw in a coffin the body of a, of a, of a poor gentleman who had passed on. And John said his prayers and, and said a blessing over the corpse and said to himself, I hope somebody tonight is praying over my father since I can't be there with him. And he said his prayers, and he went to sleep on the pew. That night he heard a horrible commotion. Brigands had broken into the church, and they were about to throw the man's body out and take the coffin. This man had died owing them money, and they were going to take the coffin to sell his debts. Well, John jumped up and said, oh, no, please, please, leave him be. As my own father would be treated, so I would like this man to be treated. Please, take everything I have in exchange for this man's debt. They laughed at John, but they took the money and left. And John tenderly took the body back into the coffin and pulled up the meager blanket over the man's shoulders, said his blessings again, and went on his way. The next day, John was walking and ran across a traveler. And the two of them decided that since they seemed to be going the same way together, they might as well share companionship and travel expenses, since John now had darn little money. As they were walking through the forest, a giant, a beautiful, beautiful song was heard, and a fluttering above their heads as a graceful white swan singing its death song fell to the floor of the forest as a gentle caress of youth. Well, said the twer traveler, there's a stroke of good luck. You never know when that might come in handy. And he took out his sword and removed the swan's wings and put them in his pack. John said, what on earth do you want those for? And the traveler said, you never know what such things may come in handy. And they traveled on. And they crossed a river, and there they, they came across a willow tree. And the man took his sword again and cut three willow switches. And John said, what are you going to do with those? And the tramp said, you never know when such things are going to be handy. And they went by, and they came across a tree that had strangely cut leaves. And the traveler again took a few of the leaves. And John said, you do know what the strangest things. And the traveler said, you never know, such things may come in handy. And John and his companions stopped at it again, and it was a marvelous inn. They had a puppet show there. Oh, the puppeteer was just wonderful. He made the puppets dance so gracefully and beautifully. But just then, a man walked in with his great big mastiff. The dog sucked to one look at the puppet show and attacked the moving figures, grabbed the queen, and snapped her head off like that. Oh, the puppeteer was devastated. Oh, my poor queen, she was the star of my show. The traveler said, not to worry, not to worry. I can fix this. And out of his backpack, he took a little vial of ointment, pulled the top off, took a dab of it, rubbed it on the queen, put her head back on. <laughs> not only was the queen puppet now whole, she could dance on her own <laughs> without <laughs> strings. She danced more gracefully and beautifully than ever before. Oh, the puppeteer was delighted. Oh, and, and the queen herself was, of course, my queen. She took the tiny crown off her head and knelt before the puppet, knelt before the traveler and said, Oh, please, please, I'll do anything you wish, but won't you please just anoint my husband and a few of our courtiers? Well, of course, the traveler could not resist such a heartfelt plea from such a tiny and beautiful creature. So he anointed the entire puppet show. They could all just dance and sing just as beautifully as they pleased. And the next day, John and the traveler went on their way. And they came to a town, and everything was not quite right in the town. The 
candy sellers had black crepe on the candy sticks. All the shutters were closed. The people walked through the town with their heads bowed low. John asked someone, what's going on? And they said, oh, the most terrible thing. Someone else has come to ask the princess for her hand in marriage. John said, but that should be a wonderful thing. That should be a, what, a thing of joy. No, you don't understand. The princess demands that her suitor ask three, that her suitor answer three questions. If he gets any one of them wrong, she chops off his head. She hangs his body in, his, in her garden, and the bones she uses as her wind chimes. You should see the princess's garden. There are dozens of dead princes hanging in it. No one knows what to do. John and the drowlers shake their heads and say, this is a terrible, terrible thing. We, we need to get out of this town as quickly as possible. And they hurried on their way, and just at that moment, a carriage came by with the windows open. And someone flashed a glance out the window. John was smitten. Was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. Could he suppose it was? Yeah. <laughs> Naturally. Yeah, unfortunately, it was the princess. John that night could do nothing for thinking of the princess. And, and his friend, the traveler, tried to persuade him, you can't do this. You have no idea what she'll ask you. You could be killed, John. Do you want your bones hanging in the princess's garden? He said, I'm so sorry. I just... I can't sleep for thinking of her. If it is meant to be, then it is meant to be, and if not, I will have died for love. So that day, John went in to speak to the princess. And when the king heard what John's mission was, he got off his throne and he cried. He put his arms around John and said, my boy, my boy, you don't want to do this. We've got dozens of princes and dukes and counts already. You, you don't want another death on my conscience, do you? And John said, I'm sorry, your majesty, but I cannot sleep for thinking of your daughter. Please, I must be allowed to try. And so the king ushered in his daughter, and she was exquisite. She was the most beautiful creature anyone in the world had ever seen, and it was of course the princes and princes and counts would, would, would fall in love with her at first glance, the same as John did. And she looked at him kindly and said, Tomorrow, John, tomorrow, I'm going to ask you my question. So John went on to the, back to the inn with a light heart and a happy, happy step, because tomorrow might be the day that he could win the princess. And the traveler bid John good night, and John said his prayer. That night, the traveler took the swan's wings and put them on his shoulders, and he flew to the palace. Just as he reached there, he saw the princess leaving the window with great wings like a bat. He flew after her, and as they flew, he withdrew one of the willow wands from his backpack and beat her. <laughs> and she said, oh, wow, the storm. <laughs> Traveler saw a hideous sight. There was an evil sorcerer. He was sitting on a, on a throne. The cushions were made of moles and the skins of mice. The canopies were made of the wings of bats still fluttering. There was horrid music played by the croaking of frogs and the chirping of crickets. The princess and the sorcerer danced. They danced all the night long. And as dawn came, the, prin the, the princess drew closer to the magician and he says to her my love when you speak to this boy you must tell him that you are thinking of my eyes she flew back and the traveler flew after her beating her all the way <laughs> the next day John woke up and he shook the traveler's hand and said you have been such a good friend to me I thank you for everything you've done and the traveler says wait John I had a dream last night it was a vision. When the princess asks you what she is thinking of, you must say to her, a pair of blue eyes. 
All right, says John, it's as good as guess as any other. I may as well use it. And so they went to the palace, and there John met with the princess, and she was more radiant than ever. And she took his hand and looked into his eyes ever so kindly and said to him, John, what am I thinking of? And John said, you're thinking of a pair of bright blue eyes? She gasped and stepped back and said, you are right. The king was so happy he wept. He, he tossed his crown in the air and he danced. The people in the town, they cheered and they, 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 they shouted. And then the princess said, John, you must come back tomorrow for your second choice. John went home that night and said his prayers again. And just as the first night, the traveler put the wings on his back and flew out and again met the princess as she was flying out the window. He followed her again. This time he took two of the little ones and beat her savagely. She says, oh, all oh, the storm is so fierce. <laughs> again she met with the evil magician. Again they danced all night to the foul tune of the crickets and the frogs. And as the end of the dance came about, the magician took her by the hands and said, my love, Tonight you must tell him that you were thinking of my hand. She flew back and all the way long he beat her and beat her. And she got back into, this, into the palace. The next day John awoke and he was quite happy, quite happy. I've got one right. And the traveler says, wait John, I've had another vision. This time when the princess asks you, you must say you were thinking of a man's hand. John went to the palace and he saw the princess. She was radiant, she was beautiful, she was graceful. She took him ever so sweetly by the hand and said, John, what am I thinking of? He said to her, a man's hand. She blanched and became still as stone. You are correct, she said, and dropped his hand and backed away. Oh, there was much rejoicing in the streets. The king was beside himself, but John was very serious now. He had one more test, one more test to see if he was destined to be the spouse of the princess. That night, after John said his prayers and went to bed, the traveler once again put on his white wings and flew after the princess, striking her with three of the willow wands until the blood flowed down her back. Oh, the storm is so fierce, oh, the hail strikes me so. <laughs> she got to the sorcerer again, and all night long they danced, and they danced, and they danced. And the evil sorcerer, with an evil grin, looked at her and said, My love, tomorrow morning, you must tell him you were thinking of my head. And the princess stepped back to fly away. Just as she flew off, the traveler drew his sword off, off came the head. He put it in his bag and flew after the princess, beating her so savagely that the blood ran from her body and dripped into the streets. The next morning, as again, the traveler said to John, John, I have had a vision. This is what you must do. You must take this bag. When the princess asks you what she's thinking of, only then do you open this bag. John promised the traveler that he would do so. He said, you have been so kind to me. You have been like my brother. If there is anything that I can ever do for you, just only name it. The traveler says, you just do as I say, John, and all will be well. John went to the princess the third time. And she stepped back, and she didn't touch him this time. She stood straight as an arrow, and cold as steel and hard as stone, and said, John, what am I thinking of now? John opened the bag and emptied it out, and the head rolled to the princess's feet. She fainted dead away. The king, on the other hand, <laughs> pronounced a month of partying. <laughs> oh, the shutters were open, the black crepe was taken off the candy sticks, free cookies were given in the streets, free wine in the bars. All oh, the townspeople celebrated. And John went to the church and said his prayers of thanks and thanks and 
and for thanks for his salvation. And the traveler said, John, you have done very well. Tomorrow, tomorrow you will marry the princess. That night as John slept, the traveler put on his white wings and again flew after the princess, striking her with all his might. And she got to the sorcerers and discovered he was dead and flew back. Now the traveler took those three cupped leaves that he had taken and scooped up three drops of blood from the sorcerer's body and took them to John and said to John, John, on your wedding night, you take these leaves, you pour them into a bath for the princess, and you push her in. You hold her there, you dip her in three times, no matter what happens, John. It must be three times, no matter what happens. You must not fail me on this, John. John promised that he would. That very day they were led princess as white as white linen. She looked horribly ill. And that night, John and the princess were led to a bedroom in the palace. John had ordered a hot bath so that he and his bride might prepare themselves. And John took out the leaves and poured the contents into the bath and he called his bride. And he seized her and threw her into the water, and she turned into a huge black snake. And he pulled her out of the water and threw her into the water again, and she rose a giant black swan. And he seized her again and threw her into the water, and great as, and great as the dawning of the sun, she arose, even more beautiful than before. She clasped her arms around his neck and said, John, you have saved me. You have broken the spell of the sorcerer. I am yours forevermore. John and the princess, the next morning, went out to meet the traveler. John took his hand and clasped him and said, My brother, there's nothing I can you do to ever repay you. And the traveler said, John, my brother, I am repaid, for I am the man whose coffin you saved. And with that, the traveler vanished. And John and the princess lived happily ever after.